Hello Louisiana Beer Reviews. Campfire Amplifier. This was introduced in I believe 2020 but it could have been sooner. I uh, have to pin down the specs. I want to get this done before we start Stout Sunday. This is going to be recorded on Stout Sunday. <clears throat> um, so that will be, be down below. There is a crazy looking series of artwork on here with a uh, donkey looks like playing a guitar wearing a crown and a marshmallow man with an upside down face and a shark and uh, all of that. So it's a, what is this exactly? It's a milk stout brewed with graham crackers, cinnamon, marshmallows with cocoa powder and vanilla beans added so well uh, that describes what it is as far as the malts and the hops we'll, we'll, we'll get into that later at some future opportunity All right. actually I have the notes written out already um, but I didn't write them on a piece of paper and um, I put them in my little uh, section on my com my blog, blog uh, web blog uh, about alcohol all right there is a dark brown nearly black appearance a thin head <clears throat> this is certainly not the first video review for this one in the world a lot of people have done reviews I just haven't gotten around to it IBUs, I would assume, are not high, but the ABV is 6.5. Saw that there on the side. 6.5. 12 ounce bottle. I figured the head wouldn't stay around much in this mini Diamore snifter. Well, with a lot of these things, the aroma is not really bountiful. You'll pick up some subtle spices, a little bit of dark malt, which usually translate in my mind to like dark brown bread crust. And then you'll get some hop oils, but this one wouldn't be focused on that. You get the flavoring, but um, the aroma of the flavoring. So let's go with the taste. Mm. It's like a lot of the other ones people are doing. I'm not opposed to that. And I, honestly, I used to because I didn't understand it. I used to take issue with flavored ales or lagers. Um, it, but now, the last eight years or so, I realized that, well, it's not hurting anything. You don't have to drink it. You could just ignore it, right? Like, uh, you don't need to be fixated on if they added flavoring or not. So, hold on a second. <clears throat> I was walking out in the bracing, dry, cold weather, and uh, it acts like menthol, like, men, you know, like, literally, the mentholated vapor rub, and so it'll loosen your sinuses, so I just noticed that. Yeah, I'm picking up more of that sort of fudginess there. Uh, you know, campfire. It's, uh, like the Shiner S'mores is what we basically have. Because think about it. Graham crackers, cinnamon, hmm, typical type thing, marshmallows with cocoa powder, another typical type thing, although you're going to probably use a Hershey's uh, Square as a heater in, on there, and vanilla beans that are giving it that vanilla flavor. Much like the Lining Kugels vanilla porter that uses actual vanilla beans in the mix, the Budweiser... Jim Beam used the vanilla beans. I believe in this one. Or oh, was it the copper lager? Yeah, vanilla beans in there. Maybe that one. Somebody was telling me they're not going to use real vanilla beans. I said, how do you get this information? Well, I just don't think they would. I said, okay, fine. Vanilla beans are expensive. Boston Beer Company and Dogfish Fish Head, they're rich. They got money. 
Anne has a bush in the has money, you know, they can buy it. Now, you might find a better utilization with vanilla extract. Or uh, in some cases, imitation vanilla extract, you know, those sorts of uh, <coughs> products. But in this case, they went with natural flavoring. It's, it's fine. Um, it's a bit more expensive than the Shiner S'mores. S'mores. I'm going to eat some more and drink some more of the s'mores. I will drink some more of this uh, as we start Dow Sunday and we process through it and all of that. So, um, would I recommend this? I certainly would. The body's medium. There's a little powderiness from the cocoa powder, uh, much like you get with the uh, chocolate stout from, uh, <coughs> excuse me, so much pollen in the air now. With springtime, you say it was January, which means springtime. <laughs> um, it's it. It's coming in. We only have about two more weeks where we are going to worry about the pipes with deep freezes. It hasn't even gotten to 32 here. I think it got to 32 one hour in November. Um, overnight, like 5 to 6 uh, a.m. Um, the Bosom. Chocolate stout, they use, I think, cocoa powder in that, and you can taste the powder as be powdery. And this is a milk stout with the lactose milk sugar. Um, a very interesting thing, and I'll probably never get to it, would be to do the Shiner S'mores, which I haven't seen any more of the Shiner S'mores, versus the Dogfish Head Campfire Amplifier. The, the, the Shiner is, like I say, about $1.79 a bottle. This was $2.29, so. My recollection is sort of even, so therefore, of course, I would go with the, the cheaper option. I saw that a Shiner uh, thing came in the other day. I haven't been able to get it yet. I just uh, I've got a fridge full of beer. It's the Shiner Pecan. I think it's like Pecan Pie. Uh, I said, woof. I think I'm going to buy it, buy it tomorrow. <laughs> I don't think I can resist. I'm scared it's going to sell out. So anyway, the score and a uh, semi-sweet finish. I think the score, to be fair, would be um, it's kind of bland like the Shiner also. That one is like an initial rush of excitement with the flavor and then it kind of dies away and then you're just stuck with kind of like ho-humness. Um, but like I told my friend Davey yesterday, I said, I, I like bland beers. You know, if it's bland, I don't mind. So, um, yeah, let's go with... A 92, I don't remember what I wrote for Shine. I could look up on it. Beer a 92 out of 100. Um, excellent, to an extent, not quite most excellent. A solid A, but an A minus, not a solid A. And I'm going to end this review by saying, Lazy les bon temps relay. Enjoy the beautiful weather.